Quick trigger warning, topics of suicide and depression will be discussed very briefly in the sections regarding Chopin and Debussy. If those topics trigger you, please skip to the recap section at the end of this podcast. Chopin was a Polish composer who was born in 1810 and died at the age of 39 in 1849. He is known for his influential piano works. Liszt and Chopin actually met one another in their 20s, but prior to that, they were both child prodigies. So good on them for just killing it in their music career before they even reached the age of 10. I'm not jealous at all. (laughs) That's totally fine. (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) What really stuck out to me when researching Chopin was that he was said to have pretty distinctive personality and seemed to struggle a lot with mental health issues. To give an example, here are some titles of articles written about him if you do just a simple Google search of his name. Chopin, a tainted genius, in memoriam of a tortured genius, and my favorite, the long suffering of Frederick Chopin are just some, to name a few. Chopin was notably shy and modest. He only gave 30 concerts in his 40 years on this earth and preferred small crowds. He would only perform piano in the dark, so he would blow out all the candles before playing, even if it was at an event. He was reported as being introverted, sensitive, and constantly suffering emotionally and physically. Chopin himself said that he was joyful on the outside but inside, something was murdering him. On top of that, he never seemed to let anyone in on his internal torment. His compositions are where we really find that he was able to express his suffering. Um, Just on a side note, don't be like Chopin. If you're suffering, talk to somebody. You are not alone, and you matter, I promise. Okay, back to Chopin. Suffering people often make the best art, and it sometimes immortalizes them. In this case, Chopin only lived to be 39, yet his piano works still live on today. Like his personality, his piano works are distinctive and dynamic, and his musical signature seemed to be chromaticism. His unique use of harmony was revolutionary at the time, and paved the way for the next generation of romantic and 20th century composers. He's a very significant historical figure in my books, but what's more important than that is his sign. Are we compatible? I googled it, and when it comes to Pisces and Gemini, we are only 10% compatible, and yeah, I'm kind of bummed about it. Google even says that Pisces will feel undervalued and emotionally dissatisfied with Gemini, so... Sorry, Chopin, I don't think it's a match for us. So before we move on to talking about Debussy, um, I want to make a similar disclaimer as I did with Liszt. This um, section wasn't made to moralize any mental health issues. It was just meant to um, talk about this composer in a human way. So with all this information so far we have on Chopin, I'd have to say that I'd either marry him or kill him. I, I just don't think he'd make a good one night stand. What do you guys think? <laughs> only only because I think he'd probably just get attached. Does that mean? Okay, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> so let's finish off this chat with one of my favorite composers of all time and the one involved with the most drama, Debussy. Debussy was a French composer born in 1862 and died at the age of 55 in 1918. Although he was born in poverty, By the age of 11, he was accepted into the Paris Conservatory because of his apparent talent with the piano. At the age of 22, he won the Prix de Rome, which was basically a scholarship granted by the French government to artists to study in Rome. Yeah, Debussy was a hotshot. And so was his love life. It was just filled with craziness, with lovers, affairs, a few wives sprinkled in there. Just, it's just a lot, so buckle down. So he fooled around with a married woman at the age of 18. After that, he got into a relationship with a woman named Gabby Dupont, and he cheated on her with a girl named Therese Roger. Debussy eventually left Gabby, but not for Therese. He left Gabby to be with her friend, Lily Texier. Him and Lily got married, and it was reported to be a very toxic relationship for the both of them. So five years into that marriage, he started fucking around with another married woman, Emma Bardock, who also happened to be the former love interest of another great composer, Gabrielle Fauré. 
are you following? Because I'm not. <laughs> so Gabby figures this out. She figures out that WC is cheating and unfortunately she tried to commit suicide. To escape the scandal, he and his new girlfriend, Emma, fled to England and they had a baby together. Um, and they both got divorced um, in their previous marriages so that they could marry one another and live happily ever after. I think the takeaway from all of this is that classical composers that we often idolize were flawed human beings just like the rest of us. And even if we don't necessarily morally agree with everything that these artists chose to do with their lives, it doesn't matter because they're dead. <laughs> Anyways, people should be held accountable for what they do, but Debussy was just being a horny fuckboy. So I don't know if it's that big of a moral dilemma, in my opinion. There's other composers um, that hopefully we'll talk about in future episodes that did a lot worse, and we still perform their music today. Let's go ahead and segue into talking more about his music, because that's his artistic legacy. His style period was on the cusp of romanticism and modernism. He's often regarded as the first impressionist composer. Impressionism was a movement in art that focused on creating a mood or atmosphere rather than focusing on concrete realism. This art movement was translated to music by composers like Debussy and Ravel, and some aspects of Impressionism music and music can include using non-traditional musical forms and harmony, creating colors with different timbres, and embracing a general fluidity within the piece. While this seems to describe Debussy's music to a T, Debussy himself rejected that term. I'm not exactly sure he didn't like this term to categorize his music, but it may be because Impressionism was an art form that was harshly critiqued at the time. He could have possibly seen that term as an insult. Debussy, you're an Impressionist. I'm sorry, just accept it. So, like I said, Debussy is one of my favorite composers of all time. But for the sake of this game, I think I'm going to have to kill him. It's just too much drama. Before doing my research for this podcast, I assumed I would choose to marry Debussy, bang list, and kill Chopin. But my opinion has since changed. My official answer to this specific game of fuck, marry, kill is fuck list, marry Chopin, and kill Debussy. I know, I know, this is very controversial. My goal with this podcast is to talk about classical music in a way that is entertaining and doesn't necessarily fit that uptight, ultra-refined mold that seems to envelop the classical music world. I'd love to know what your take is on this very serious matter. You can contact me on Instagram at Classical Music on Mushrooms. And I hope you enjoyed the first episode of this podcast. So remember to be kind to everyone, spread light, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.